Welcome to session three of the ultimate introduction to building a digital marketing strategy. I'm back at Normanby Hall and in this session we're going to look at the toolbox um, that is part of the digital marketing strategy. We briefly covered techniques in session one and in this session we're going to delve a little bit deeper into each one to see how they might benefit your business. The first one we're looking at is search engine marketing, SEO, or actually just appearing in, in Google results. Everybody says Google, like everybody says Hoover, but really what we're talking about is search engines. 90% of searches that take place in the UK are done on Google. And whilst that is obviously a huge percentage of the market, it's important not to forget that there are other search engines available, things like Bing, or potentially things like DuckDuckGo. There's lots of people now looking at alternatives to Google. With your search engine optimization, it's really important to think about what your niche is. What are you offering your customers or potential visitors? So with these two examples, someone has searched for things to do in Lincolnshire. That's a really broad search. And they might start and do some research and look at actually what what options there are. And then as they delve into their research, they might think, actually, do you know what? Some of these aren't really relevant to me. I want to look for something that's more specific to my needs. So they start and refine their search. So they start and look for things like things to do in Lincolnshire for families, things to do in Lincolnshire with the children. And it's about being present when people get to that transactional stage of their search. Social media is obviously a massive opportunity with lots and lots of people using different social media channels. There is one of these um, bite-sized sessions on social media which you might want to delve into. With social media, the important thing to bear in mind is that it's not just about your page or posts that you put out or photographs that you upload. People use social media to gather opinions or to question those who may have had experiences before. So if you take the example where someone is in a, in, in a group where they're looking for dog-friendly accommodation um, and they might put a question out there about have people got places they would, they would recommend? So that would be an opportunity for you as a business owner um, to uh, offer your accommodation or they might put a specific query out saying that they want to stay somewhere with specific dates. And it's about you being present in those forums to be able to take those opportunities. Things like TripAdvisor uh, also loosely fall into that social media bracket because it is an interactive forum where it's user-generated content. And TripAdvisor can be super important for those in the visitor economy. So do check out what your TripAdvisor listing looks like and ensure that you're interacting with people that put um, feedback and reviews on there as that's going to form part of people's research when, when they come to look at your business. Content marketing can either be on your own website or on other people's websites. So on your own website, it can take the form of blogs or news updates. So that can aid your search engine optimization as well because it suggests to the search engines that you've got something interesting to say and also that your content is up to date and it's, your website is being serviced and it's being freshened up. Content can also be placed in other websites. So it might be things like Visit Lincolnshire. So you might have a link from there to your own website or it can be more details where you might have an article, say, in Coast magazine, um, like the Stunning Seascape Cafe, uh, where they would be talking about the cafe itself and its location, and then within that, have a link to your own website. Pay-per-click advertising or search advertising is also um, something that might be considered as part of your customer acquisition through your digital marketing strategy. And this is where you pay for your advert to appear within search listings. So quite often um, you might be searching for something for, for yourself or for your business and maybe the top three results will have ad next to them. That's effectively an advert that someone has paid for 
to appear when that search takes place. If someone clicks on that advert and goes through to that website, then that advert is then paid for. So pay per click advertising. Affiliate marketing is basically a financial recommendation model. So it's where you are placing your ads on an independent site that has a similar target audience to yourself. Um, and generally this is in exchange for payment on sales generated. Typically it goes through a third party monitoring service such as um, Affiliate Futures. And you, you need to know specifics about your own target audience so that this works really effective for you. You could consider placing ads on other sites or if you've got a site that's particularly niche or you've got a particularly niche target audience that, and you have a high traffic coming to your website, then potentially could you consider placing ads on your site? It could be an alternative income stream for your business. So native advertising, so these examples have been grabbed from um, Guardian Labs, which is where people pay for editorial and it appears as though it would in the online newspaper itself. So the presentation is the same, the typeface is the same, the way it's laid out is all the same. So to all intents and purposes, you might think that you are reading um, a piece of editorial. However, you'll see on the examples that these have actually been paid for um, and it, it's just in the top right hand corner displaying who's sponsored the features. But it gives an opportunity for your business to promote itself in a wider environment and it gets that almost passive endorsement um, that comes from being written in an editorial style in, in a magazine or newspaper that you think your audience might read. E-newsletters should form a really important part of your digital marketing strategy. Um, you can use them for customer acquisition. So it might be that you have um, people who leave their contact details um, with you on, on your, through your website and that you mail them, um, you know, they want to be kept updated of things that are going on. So the example on the right is from Harrogate Theatre. Um, and they are basically putting out um, listings of what's happening over the next few months. Or it might be that you want to stay in touch with your existing customers so that you maximise the value that you get from them. So if you think about um, you've acquired a customer or you've had a visitor or you've had someone come and stay at your beautiful cottage, ideally you'd like them to come back. So why not tell them what's going on? Why not build a little community of people who are interested and excited about staying with you once again. So the example chosen here is actually from a brand called Findra who sell um, merino clothing. Um, but their e-newsletters rarely mention the clothing. Instead, they have heroes in them who, who are almost ambassadors for their products. Findra understands their customers so well that they know that their customers will engage with that e-newsletter. So they're creating a tribe of people that will follow them. So they put content out that will inspire their tribe and keep them engaged. So they send out their e-newsletter once a week on a Sunday evening and it contains things about their ambassadors. It might contain their favourite podcasts, it might contain their favourite movies, it might contain their favourite book or their favourite recipe or their favourite swim or walk. So is there something that you can learn from that that your audience might be super interested in or super engaged about that you can really delve into to build that tribe of people to follow your business? That wraps up the final session of the introduction to digital marketing strategy and I hope that you found it useful.